You can find me in the club pouring some bug into my mug. <laughs> I got what you need. Come give me a hug. Juno, Juno's hug. literally at the door like, get me out of here. I can't imagine why. Hi, Bino. It's too late for us to have coffee, so we're having bubbly. Uh, courtesy of Bobby Boufflet. Man, it is so pineapple smelling. Mm. It's so strong. Okay. Juno wants some attention. So Jeff shaved off all of his hair, everyone. I did. And uh, Juno did not recognize him and no. got kind of scared. So I was sitting at my uh, work desk and she came around the corner and she like looked at me like, Juno has a very uh, distinct, what's the word I'm looking for? Nervous Nelly. No, like she, like oh. you can tell her feelings and stuff. She's very, um, she's easy to read. Yeah, but there's a word for it. Empathetic. No. I don't know. Expression, expression That's full. What, expressive. Expressive. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. You're very expressionful. She's very expressive. And you can tell how she's feeling. And so she came around the corner and her ears went back and she kind of backed off, which means like, I don't know you. Yep. And then I just looked at her and I was like, hey, it's me. And then like, she immediately like wagged her tail and then came up to me and was like shocked. Welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about Board games. and not changing your sweaters. Exactly. What day is this? Who knows? You'll never know. Is it Tuesday? Yeah. Is it Saturday? Is it Thursday? Maybe it's Wednesday. You'll never know. You'll never know. The point is, we're here drinking bubbly for board games and bubbly. My, our Mickey Mouse mugs. Sharp. We just tried raspberry for the first time. It's I. Right. It's not the best. Pineapple used to be competing for number one, and now I feel like it's Pineapple, not. I think, still is my number one, though. Tell us down below, what is your favorite flavor of bubbly? We are here today to do another video. Can Shocking. you believe that? I. It's been a while since we've ever done a video. We are here to talk about a couple of board games that just don't get enough love, in our opinion. And we've done this before. Yeah, we did a video like this over a year ago, and, you know, we tend to enjoy talking about games that we don't hear a lot of people talking about. We like to try different games. We do our BGG Have We Played It series so we can find out about new stuff, and we're getting up there in that series, you know? We need to do another one of those soon. We do. We will do another there's, one soon. There's no rhyme or reason to these other than that we try to talk about games that, like, aren't new and popular. Mm -hmm. They might have been popular at one point, but they're not anymore. Like all um, of these games are over, are ranked over two thousand okay. on Board Game Geek. Yeah. So, but we don't do that on purpose per se. We no. try to avoid anything that's a thousand or below, below. because yeah. you know you might have heard about it. The first one that we are going to talk about is a game that we played uh, last May during GaggleCon, and that is called Cursed Court. Ugh. This is a game that did come out in 2017, so it's possible that it was popular at one time, but nobody talks that about this That is a game, game that I'm anymore. surprised is not in our collection yet. Honestly, me too. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Because I feel like our group it. would really like that game. Yeah. So basically, in Cursed Court, you are, guess what? Cursed. At a Cursed Court. And there is a grid of different characters mm -hmm. and you have some information that is secret to you mm -hmm. and you have some information that is public to everyone and essentially this is kind of like a bidding game where you 100% a bidding game. where you it's kind of like 100% a bidding game yeah. where you are trying to bid on different characters different areas rows columns you're trying to bid on characters that are going to come out on the board and kind of like where they're going to be no no it's who's going to be at the court uh, basically you could bid on, these aren't what they're called, but it could be like the queen and the prince are going to be at the court. And mm -hmm. it's more lucrative for yeah. you to bid on if they're going to come out or not. Yeah. And you can bid on different like quadrants. Yeah. You can bid on like specific areas mm -hmm. because you might be like, oh, I know the queen's going to be coming out or whatever. And I know that they're going to be here and all of these things. So basically it's a bidding game. But what's really neat about this bidding game is it's extremely mean. Which it's you insanely know that we love. Mean. So basically I could put out two crowns mm -hmm. and Jeff could be like, I'm going to put out five. And then if I want to put more out, I have to then try and beat that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of like got this like escalating feeling where you're like, 
I don't really want to like waste all of these different things. You do get the crowns back mm -hmm. if somebody outbids you, but then it just becomes more and more difficult to gain control of different things. Plus, you're trying to see where people are placing things because you're like, because again, they what have do they know they have their own secret information. Yeah, what yeah. did they know that I don't know? And so we played this at four players, five players. We played this at five players, and we had an absolute blast playing this. Mm -hmm. Because of that mean element. So if you are not a fan of yeah, mean if you don't games, like mean but like games, yeah. this is mean without. I mean, I guess you it could feels make mean it in mean. a it feels mean in a fun way. It's if that mean in can a fun way, sense. yeah. Because you have to bid. Like yeah. you have to, and sometimes you run out of areas where you can bid. I just or it. like you just might not have enough crowns to compete for some areas. Mm -hmm. So like you might just have to bid on something that's like maybe this is gonna happen, maybe it's not. Yeah, yeah. I just think we loved it so much we definitely want to get a copy of this and you just don't hear anybody ever talking about it and it is a fantastic game if you're into bidding games and even yeah. if you're not because yeah, we're not necessarily not into bidding, into bidding, bidding games, games no. but this one just hits different yeah agreed the next one that we want to talk about is a game called gods love dinosaurs this game I don't know why this is game ranked get... 2,226. Curse Court was 3,173 on BGG. Not that that really means anything, but Gods of Dinosaurs is a game that came out a few years ago. I love dinosaurs. We personally. fell in love with this game like super early on in our hobby, and it's still, yeah. it still holds true. We got this because we love dinosaurs, yeah. and you know the premise of it seemed really interesting, so basically it's like food chain stuff yep. you don't want the dinosaurs to die mm -hmm. they can't go extinct if you make your dinosaurs go extinct you're kind of a jerk so you're trying to build out different animals those and animals dino eggs. and dino eggs though and dinos and those animals move in different patterns need to be able to eat other animals so as an example the eagle or hawk needs to be able to eat the mice, mice yeah. or the rats i think they're rats so you need to make sure that where the eagle eagle can move, there are rats where it can eat. Is it raw frogs too? There's frogs, there's rabbits, there's rats, there's tigers. So you have some prey, mm -hmm. and then you have some predators, mm -hmm. and then you have dinosaurs. And the dinosaurs need to eat the predators. predators. They can they can eat the little ones, yeah. but they're not going to like produce eggs or reproduce or anything. Yeah. So it's like sustaining themselves somewhat so yep. they don't die, mm -hmm. but they're not going to get their full meal and full right. benefit. Yeah. So you're just kind of like building out this like tile. A little ecosystem. Map, a little ecosystem. Yeah. And you each have your own. So we're not interacting with each other's maps or whatever. And then you got to make sure the but dinosaurs there's a shared, are... there's a shared board that you are interacting yes, with. Yes. Where you are taking tiles from and then that's what's triggering the... It's not called feeding, but basically mm -hmm. that's what's triggering the feeding. So yep. it's like, oh, okay, tigers are being triggered. So then the tigers have to be able to eat and all these things. Yeah. It is so fun. It is a great game yeah. that I have never heard. The only other channel I've heard talk about this game is Nick and Mike. Mm. They're the only other two I've ever heard talk about this game. Now, you you absorb way more content than I do. Yeah, I never have hear Have you heard anyone else talk about I it? I'm, They're the only two. I'm sure two. I have, like, in passing, but, like, nobody, like, actually just brings this game I don't. Up. I don't know if this game kind of got lost in, like, the shuffle of maybe other games coming out at the same I time. Could've. But, yeah, I very much enjoy Cods of Dinosaurs. It's colorful. It's fun. It is one of those games that Jeff and I do tend to, like... It's one of those games where we're like, oh, we haven't played that in mm -hmm. a while. Like, let's play it. And we don't always do that with a lot of games. Yeah. But, yeah, and it's super accessible. Like, you can play this game with anyone. It's not overly complicated, and mm -hmm. it's fun. Agreed. Yeah. The next one we want to talk about is called Mandala Stones. Mm -hmm. This is ranked 2,267 on BGG, and this is from Board and Dice. And this is an abstract game. It's a very good it abstract game. It is a very, game. very good abstract game. Because when people talk about abstract games, well, Jeff, what game do they talk about? Azul. Always Azul. Well, what about Mandala Stones? I say this game is so pretty. It really is. It really is. And it has the same nice little tiles. Yeah, it's got like the little chunky like acrylic tiles. And it's very, it's almost like zen-like, but I guess that's kind of like the theme. Yeah. It's like mandala mm. stones. But basically you are moving these different like dowels and there are different stones that have different patterns around them and mm -hmm. different colors. And you are trying to collect stones to put onto your board in order to trigger different actions. Mm -hmm. And then you are kind of just scoring points as you go along and whoever 
gets to the end and scores the most points wins, basically. Yeah, I feel like it's it gives me similar vibes to Azul. Like, mm-hmm. very, like, hey, let's just chill and play this abstract, puzzly game. Yeah. But I feel like it's got a little bit more depth of strategy. There's a little bit more going on. You can move those dowels around, which impacts what future tiles your opponent can take, especially mm-hmm. a two-player. So I feel like it's a little bit more involved than Azul. Yep. Maybe that's why. Maybe. It's not quite as simplistic to like, because Azul you can play on that side where you're literally just matching the patterns. Yeah. It's very like straightforward. That's true. So maybe Mandala Stones is kind of just a little bit too thinky. Yeah. Uh, and like it really is because you have to plan for what you're doing because where you place the stones you then have to like trigger one of those things mm-hmm. and you're like huh is it can I get more points if I hold off on this yeah. and you know you might be able to score everything or just score one and you just have to like really kind of think about it so it, it is a bit more brain burning yeah. but I still find it to be like kind of like a peaceful game if you've played a bunch of Azul and you're like I want a little bit more a little bit more. more. Different. I think Mandala Stones is that next progression. Yeah, you just don't hear people talking about it. I think I heard a few people talking about it when it first came out, but it really is kind of like a beautiful, fun <clears throat> game that I I actually, this was a game that really surprised me. And mm. I don't know why, because I love abstract games, mm. but for some reason I saw it and I was like, eh, I, I don't know, like we'll try it. And then we played it and we loved it. So yeah. next up, is a game about ninjas. Oh, I was like, what game? Night of the Ninja. Night of the Ninja. From Brotherwise Games. And this is ranked 3009 on BGG. Here's what I think has happened for Night of the Ninja. What? There has been a influx of party games lately. Yeah. Like Social deduction. A lot of party games are coming out, mm-hmm. which is great. I'm not saying that's a negative. Yeah. And I think Night of the Ninja came out and kind of just got swept away from like games like Doodle Dash, So mm-hmm. Clover, etc. But my God, is Night of the Ninja good. This game is so fun. It is a game about lying to people. Mm-hmm. And I love to do that in games. So basically in Night of the Ninja, one team is the Cranes. The other team is... Lotus. The Lotuses. And you You're don't You're playing as know clans. Clans. And it's a social deduction game. You do not know who is on your team. All you know is that you want to make sure that the leader of your team stays alive. There are going to be different cards that you get, and it tr- everything triggers kind of in order. So it's like, okay, if anybody has a spy card, reveal your spy card and the spy and take, or your, actions. And take your action. So you might get to look at somebody else's card. You might get to randomly kill off somebody mm-hmm. else or like swap cards with people. And basically you are trying to convince everybody that you're either on their team or that you're on their team. Nobody yeah. knows whose team you're on. So you just kind of have to like, build, like there's moments. You have to build game. trust with yeah. people around the board because as Jamie mentioned, everyone has like, a certain clan they're on mm-hmm. and those clans have numbers from like let's call it three two and one yeah i think it so is. your number one clan member is your the head of your clan and they need to survive so if you get to look at a card and you're part of the lotus clan for example and you look at a card and it's a crane family one well you want to kill that person you but you want, want that person to trust you mm-hmm. you want that person to think you're on their team or if you're on their team but you've already convinced somebody else that you are a Lotus, you might be like, they're with us. Mm -hmm. Like, they're with us. All is good. It's all social manipulation. Yeah. It's insanely fun. It's so fun. It plays so quickly. Like, you can play, like, three or four rounds of this in a row. It's chef's kiss. Yeah. It's it's really... And I'm not a social deduction fan. Mm -hmm. But my goodness, is this one good. And again, like, when you get to be an assassin and that assassin card comes up and you're like... I'm going to kill Jamie and you're so convinced that Jamie is on the other team and Jamie is actually your number one family member. There's and you're a lot like, of fighting oh in this God. game in yeah. like a fun way. Be like, oh, why'd you kill me? Like, yeah. uh. anyways, it's yeah. really, really good. Highly recommend. I'd say I would probably want to play with at least five or six I was going to say people. five plus. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Then the last game that we have to talk about is called The Road to Canterbury. And this one is ranked 2,859 on BGG. 
We discovered this one, or I should say mm -hmm. I discovered this one because you didn't get to play it, mm -hmm. in Edmonton with Tyler and Ilya. This is from Eagle Griffin Games, and it is a game that I had never heard of. It is a game that I would have walked by every single time. Mm -hmm. So basically, in this game, you are like a pardoner. You're a fibber. You're a big You're a fat religious liar. liar. Basically. So the people of the town are coming to you and you are basically saying, I'm going to forgive you of that sin. You're good. It's all like the theme is so weird. It's kind of like. What, it's real greasy. It is. It's basically but like. that is historically accurate. Yeah. Like there were religious pardons given to people. Yeah to collect money for the church. Like that was a real thing yeah. that happened. And basically like you're trying to do that and you're trying to collect different types of sins mm -hmm. points in order to gain more points. And you're traveling along the road to Canterbury, whoever makes it to Canterbury first wins. You have like different types of event cards that you're going to be playing out. You're trying to like, if people eventually commit too many sins, they die. And mm -hmm. you're kind of like... There's a bit like whatever. set collection to it. Yeah, there's some set collection to it. There is like objectives. And there's a lot going on in this game. But it's not a complicated game. It is one of the most unique games I've not I've played. I've not played much like it. Yeah. Yeah. If anything. It's Th Not only mechanically, but thematically. Yeah. Very interesting. And I appreciate it for its historical kind of narrative that I think it was trying to portray. Also really, really funny. Like there's flavor text on mm -hmm. all of the cards and there's like names of anyway. It doesn't it's... take itself super serious for the theme that no. it is. Yeah. It's really, yeah. really good. It's kind of hard to explain. Mm -hmm. um, but just know that if you walk by it and you're like, what is that game? Because it's, it's very unassuming, yeah, the game. It, the, the box art and the box, I feel like a lot of people would just walk by and be like, ah, that's silly. But when you silly. play the game, the art really goes well with mm -hmm. it. One I'm very happy we have in our collection because, Same. like, it is so unique. Mm -hmm. And I do think people would see it. Certain people would see it and be like, what's that? Yeah. Like, what's that all about? Because the box is oddly shaped. The art's a bit different than you'd normally see. It's just... And it could draw in a certain type of person who's like, oh, I don't want to play something like fantasy or I don't mm -hmm. want to play this, but maybe they like, you know, history and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Anyways, it's great. Highly recommend. I skipped one. Let's do it. And then for our last game that we want to talk about, you have heard us talk about this one for sure, but we have not heard anybody else talk about it. And that... There are certain people on our Discord that Oh, there are people on our Discord that love this yeah. game. That game is called Flick of Faith, and this is from Awaken Realms Light, and this is ranked 1,240 on BGG. Jeff, do you want to tell people about That's Flick of Faith? That's actually not a bad ranking. It really isn't, but like you never hear people talking about it. Flick of Faith is, as we could probably tell from the title, a dexterity game where you're flicking discs you're flicking onto faith. this neoprene mat that has a bunch of different territories on it. So it is an area control, area majority game where you are flicking discs onto this map. And scoring points based off of certain things that are going to come up into the game. So in the game, there are law cards. And the group gets to vote on those law cards by doing this, just like Caesar did. And the law cards are basically breaking the game. Mm -hmm. So normally, you would just take your disc, you have a little area in your corner, and you flick it onto the board. The law cards might say, oh, you now need to stack three of your uh, discs in a column and flick the top one off. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you need to drop your discs from a, a foot above the board yeah. instead of flicking it. It just it changes the game as you go. It's just chaotic, silly fun. And it is thematically, everybody plays a different god. and With some asymmetry. With asymmetrical powers. Yeah. And on each side, it's like, there's, like, as an example, Zeus on one side and Hera on the other yeah. side. Like There's a bunch wife. of, there's a ton or, of variability. Yeah, and there's, like, Egyptian gods and Nordic gods and Greek gods. And, like, it. this game is so ridiculous. It is absolutely outrageously ridiculous that you cannot stop laughing when you're playing it because the laws that you're voting on that do break the game, some of them are, like, there's a ramp. It might be like, use the ramp, and then you have to like flick up a ramp, and then, yeah. 
good time to jump in there because the ramp's actually part of the expansion, yeah. which is called Cataclysm. Mm -hmm. But I just want to mention it because I do think if you're going to get this game, get the expansion. I normally wouldn't say that it's a requirement. Oh, yeah. This isn't a requirement, but yeah. it does add a ton of fun to this game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a bunch of different promos. Loki, Santa, Cthulhu. OMG, we need all of those. Uh, it's, it's, outrageous. it's outrageous fun. And interestingly enough, we had a game day here with our friend Matt, mm -hmm. and we played a bunch of different games. And guess what the game was that he went home being like, I want to play that again. It was Flick of Faith. It was Flick of Faith. It is just a fun time. It doesn't matter if you're a board gamer. Uh, any it, You you can have fun playing play this game with, with anyone. Kids, play Kids, with anyone. non-board gamers, board gamers, it doesn't matter. This might be one of the most like inclusive, easy-to-table, fun games yeah. out there. The voting is the best part. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're literally like, I don't know, it's everybody going to vote. It's so much fun. Yeah. I like cannot stop laughing when we play this game. Anyways, those are six different games that we feel like just need to get a little bit more love. So if you haven't tried them, those are games that we highly recommend. Maybe they might be at a local board game cafe or something that you can go and test out. We'd love to know down below, have you played in any of these games? What do you think of them? All that good stuff. Now, if you're interested in buying board games, like any of the many that we mentioned today, a great place to start would be your friendly local gaming store. It would be. For us, that is... The Boardroom Game Cafe. Yes, it is. Our mugs, once again, were in the sink. I literally uh, had Jeff, mine earlier today. Jeff doesn't know the rule where the Boardroom Game Cafe blah, blah, mugs blah, 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 are for videos. Blah, 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 blah. And not only did he use one, he used both of them. I am very much a, I'm having coffee, I'm grabbing a mug, don't care what it I is. I even put them in the back, and it's like he moved, no, you must move everything out of the way. I don't know how I could possibly put them more in the back. Ridiculous. Now, if you like snacks, you should check out Munch Pack. We have you a should. code to get $5 off of your subscription. It's snacks from around the world. We wow. love to snack. We just got our first box. We just got our first box. It is wild. It is. It is actually wild. So excited wild. to show you. We are going to show you more in our monthly mm -hmm. wrap up. But that's everything that we have for today. If you like what you see. Please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Later it is. You didn't know who was dad. You know, Juno's had quite the day. She was scared by a puppy. Juno is a daddy's girl, for sure. You uh, know that to be Excuse true. Excuse me? She, she loves me. And I had her out for a walk today. Walkies. And there was an elderly lady who had a bigger dog that she probably couldn't handle. She well, like I shouldn't say leash. couldn't. She couldn't she handle. She couldn't. And the dog saw Juno and bolted at Juno, and she let go of the dog's leash. Juno's not dog friendly. Uh, Juno is a very anxious dog, and I had to basically lift her up because we otherwise... We have a harness with a handle. It otherwise, she probably would have, uh, demolished. in defense, demolished that other dog. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. We got through it. Now, keeping in mind, in the U.S., you have some flavors you that we You have my favorite have. one, which is, uh, is it melon? Yeah. We have watermelon. No, 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 melon. Remember they had it here briefly? It was like the first one I ever tried. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't remember, but I know. Stamper, kid. I don't know why it's still stuck in my head. Stamper, Connecticut. What are we doing, Jamie? Okay, 